Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make your own travel watercolor set. Now this is something that I just made yesterday, but it would fit right in my travel watercolor case. If you want to see more about this case, you should check out the video that I just did. Uh, and it'll go into details about how to travel with watercolors and the things I normally bring. Now I made this whole set using uh, tubes of watercolor paint. And this, this, because I just made it yesterday, uh, this bottom three-fourths or two-thirds uh, is still kind of damp. So I'm waiting for that to set up before I put my lid on. Now my lid, everybody, this look familiar? This is a uh, box for like a gift card or like some pretty jewelry. A lot of these things get thrown away, but in my house, we reuse a lot of things. Uh, this was actually just kind of chilling by the door. I grabbed it when I was looking for a little container yesterday because I was desperately looking on the internet for little metal containers and I was like, I spotted this one downstairs a couple, a couple weeks ago when I was looking for my business cards. This was uh, hanging out in one of my drawers. Now, this also is for maybe gift cards, something like that. But... I'm thinking of containers you could use. This little bad boy, you've probably used a lot. I believe this is either mine or my daughter's. Uh, from a long time ago. Pops out. You could ditch this. These paints are gross. They're too waxy. They're really, they're not good. They're good for little tiny kids. But I would say that you could up, a, up your uh, kids' paints as well. Now this little container, this could also work. Uh, one thing I mentioned before we get into how I made this one is there are different ways that you can make your own little travel kit. Uh, you can certainly create your own little divisions here. You could have use like little bottle caps, um, whether they're from alcoholic beverages or sodas or whatever and line them up in here. If you are someone that does a lot of watercolor, you might have little half pans that you could set in here or full ones. Um, I'm gonna show you how to adhere things like that using glue dots. But if you were hardcore going to keep them and never change them out, you could use uh, something really strong like E6000. I was actually gonna use E6000 for this project, but my tube unfortunately had hardened, which is a sad part of E6000. I feel like I rarely make it through a whole tube before it's done so. So this, we're not going to use today, but this was one example I want to show you, is how you can turn a crappy watercolor uh, set, which you could actually probably just buy one at the dollar store, into something awesome. But you could also find one of these at the dollar store. This is a lot better than plastic, it won't break. So this one I made last night, we're going to set this aside, because that one is ready to go, well, as soon as it dries. And this one is ready to show you today. So this isn't in here or in here or anything, so you can see what it is. So you might be curious, what is this white thing, right? This is a mini ice cube tray. Now this one is plastic, and unfortunately, well, I looked on the Bed Bath & Beyond website before to, uh, trotting over to the store, I um, unfortunately found out that it wasn't silicone despite its claim that you could just twist it and it would super come out real fast uh, and easily. Uh, it's same same dimensions as the silicone ones, but um, hard. Now, the silicone ones I'm mentioning are easily found on eBay or Amazon for a couple bucks. I live in Virginia. The bad thing about eBay when you're ordering things that are super cheap is they're probably coming from China or a different Asian country. And that can take up to uh, a month, uh, anywhere between one week, which has been a super surprise because even stuff from California will take a week um, to six weeks for something to arrive. Sometimes I have patience, like I'm waiting for this really sweet fabric to come from Taiwan uh, and that is still on its way. But uh, as far as showing this, I wanted to do it a little faster. So I kind of, to kind of like decided I would figure out a solution. Obviously this is hard, so you're thinking, how do you cut that? 
this, and poor little thing, I said it against this so you can see it, is a Walnut Hollow um, wood cutting tool. Now, wood cutting, or, or wood burner. The wood burner is really nice, actually, but this poor little hot blade, and I've never used a hot blade, so maybe I tortured it a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it is a, at an angle, and for life me, I cannot get it back the other direction. Just the more that I burn stuff to melt this, uh, there's a pack of two, to melt this tray, to cut out the little, you know, sections and whatnot, to get it down to the other side, and then this one, which I cut multiple times. I, I, I have a second blade. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever use that one. Maybe I'll use it for something real lightweight like stencils. Um, but I think I kind of killed this one. But this one, um, just like the regular wood burning tips, it uh, screws right into the base. So I turn this up and I'm not going to show you because it'll be a little pill of smoke and it will smell like plastic. Well, to me, not you. And I already did the hard part last night. I'm going to save this little thing for, I don't know. It'd be kind of good for beads. It'll, it, the second one will have a different purpose. Because I already did the hard work. So you can see this is... You know, a lot of cutting. Obviously this is off. So what I did was hold up my tray to my container and figure out where exactly it would sit on there. Now the other one was super easy and this one I kind of estimated a little too tight so I had to recut it which is why it's a little bit longer and a little bit shorter than um, maybe it would have been at the tightness. So what I did was starting like, I decided to start like bottom was easier to really melt that blade in there and separate it. Now, if you are not, you know, kind of a badass and really feel like annoying your family with the fumes of hot melted plastic, which were surprisingly not as terrible as I expected, be patient or find a store that has a slow cone ones because you can just cut those with scissors save yourself some time so we get that idea you need to cut up the little tray to fit in here now if you were just to leave this in here and fill it up with your paints you go bloop, and fall right out so we're gonna we're gonna talk to our friend glue dots now i have a bunch of different glue dots and um I forget what company it is. Whichever company makes glue dots, a few years ago sent me a bunch of glue dots and I actually used them for a different project which you will find on my website, uh, which is just craftyladyabby.com um, for a different home decor project. We're taking glue dots, home decor, is that something normal? They're usually used for scrapbooking, but we're not using them for scrapbooking today. So what you're gonna do is you can see that little dot on there maybe, hopefully. Let's see, make sure you see it. It's just a little shiny kind of off yellow thing. So what you want to do is take a little corner, one of the corners, lay it up on there as good as you can. Give a little rub and see if it'll work for us. Come on. It's a little tricky. I found these. And as you can tell, I don't have it the way that it's supposed to be where it's actually giving me glue dots. So you can see it's up on there. Maybe you can. I don't know if it'll focus. So I'm going to pick another corner, give it a good rub. And I want you guys to see whether it was easy for me or not. Uh, because while I may do a lot of crafts, this is on my nail now, uh, not everything comes easy. It, uh, it's a lot of trial and error. I am not a scrapbooker. So you scrapbookers probably know some easier ways to handle your glue dots. Um, I don't know, the tedious process of tweezers and not getting my fingers dirty isn't my speed. I like to get in there and get dirty. Uh, in the art world, I should say. I hope that came out right. Uh, so what I'm doing is just kind of glowing around this. Let me get them all in there. So I got most of them all. Get more around the sides. I'm just going kind of every other one on here, but um, you could certainly do every single one, but you will see that you really don't need to. 
because it is going to be in there. These are the advanced strength. I grabbed my strongest ones uh, for my home decor project. But since they were up here and I didn't feel like digging through my box of tape, because who does? Everyone has a box of tape, right? Lots of glue dots? Well, I guess I do. <laughs> Um, I didn't feel like digging through my studio and trying to find something else. These work great. Uh, they are not, I mean, they're sticky. They definitely are, but they're not as messy as saying doing real glue in the sense like a wet glue. <clears throat> These are just sticky. Sticky, but not, not gooey. Not gooey like glue. All right. So I got... Bunch around the sides. Kind of struggling with this a little. So I want to make sure I get it all in there. And I'm going to put a couple in the middle. Oh, yeah, that's good and sticky. All right. Ooh. See? Stuck to my finger. I can see that. Mm -hmm. Shiny. Oh, there we go. So they're yellowish. So all you're going to do is take your little container. I'm going to hold like this so I can see. Uh, ooh, already sticking. You want to line it up in there. Now, you could shove it to the side if you felt like maybe sticking some little bobs and bits in there. Uh, you do not have to. Um, surprisingly, line this up kind of decent in the center. Uh, like I said, you could put it to the side. But I'm going to give this one to my daughter because it's a little bit one. And I want her to get into maybe taking some art on the road because sometimes she gets grumpy even though she's a teenager. Oh, wait. She's always been kind of grumpy, uh, but the teenager doesn't really help. I still love her a lot. So I want her to have something cool that she can take on the road or take on family trips, easily transportable, not having to fill a big bag, fits right in your backpack. You know, this metal tin, a lot better than plastic. The worst that's gonna happen is gonna dent. It's not gonna shatter or anything. So this is great for backpacks for a bunch of your parents that are looking for travel things for your kids, this will do you. So let's get on to how we're gonna make this all filled. Now this is just the box for the watercolors that I actually really like. Um, these are the Dollar Roni uh, set from Walmart. <laughs> I think it's just maybe a brand that they carry or Maybe their brand of art supplies. You think Walmart has art supplies? I have a lot. So I actually have <clears throat> one from Artist Loft as well, which I actually just opened last night and was kind of disappointed in how the how it was difficult for them to come out. And I want to point out that there are different um, qualities in watercolors. Even the tube version, um, they all have different qualities. And it does take a little bit of experimentation to find out what you like. And while I like the Artist Loft um, watercolor pans a lot, and I have three different ones of those, uh, these I found a little bit hard to squeeze in here. Now they might be gray in their own. Of course, watercolors are water soluble, which means they will rehydrate. Uh, which is why we're putting them on here. Now, these are taking a while to dry at the top three, four, or three quarter, three quarters? Two thirds! Because they're six. The math and the brain. Must need a nap or something. Anyway, the bottom half, or bottom, <laughs> one third is the artist loft, and the top two thirds are the Dollar Rodney. Now, the uh, Dollar Rodney one, or Rodney ones are um, taking longer to dry than the bottom ones. You can see those artist loft ones are matte now. So I just add some water to that and rehydrate them. So what I'm gonna do is actually show you how to do it with the um, Dollar Rodney watercolor set because that squeezed in here really lovely and made my life easy. So we're gonna set that aside. All right, for this little process, it's gonna be real easy. This is a palette knife. You can just use any type of little plastic knife just to smooth out the paint in case they get a little funky. Um, just a scrap of paper. Uh, this is just 
what do we call it? Paper towel. Go ahead, sit in there. We're going to open up our set and set our uh, lid aside, and we have our set. So this particular one that I made has four uh, this way and then six this way. This set that I have in front of me is 24 colors. So perfect, right? Now I have, I don't remember how these came, <clears throat> but I have sorted these kind of in a gradient of shades. I put my neutrals at the beginning and kind of worked some neutrals into there as a gradient of shades. Now this is not say like a normal, uh, like the Roy G. Biv thing. Uh, this is slightly different on a spectrum of color, but you can work them together however you want. Um, you know, brown or red, very similar on the warm side. So, very easily. I'm gonna squeeze our little paint. Pick this up for you. Just gonna take a little paint, squeeze it right in there. Boop. You don't need much. I'm gonna hold it a little easier. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in there. Then, squeeze that tube on there. So what you're gonna do is take each of your colors and squish them in there. It will take some time, I won't show you all of them. Guys, you already saw what it looks like finished. So you see how that's kind of setting out from the top? So what you would do is, if you see that there's a lot of space in there, right? But it's kind of squishing out from the top. See how it's like a little peak, like a tiny swirl of ice cream. So you could take your little palette knife and just squish it in there. You can see you just wipe it, the blade against the uh, side of the container. Make sure I can see too. And that's all you gotta do. And then it's just watercolor, so you could dip your your knife into some water. I have some water to the side. Um, and my nice little Greek yogurt container. I keep on getting my yogurt in a big container. I eat my yogurt like a, a good lady, I guess. It makes my tummy happy. Um, and then I just wash these things out and reuse them like paint. Uh, we call them water cups for paint. And they get stained and they get real grody. I don't feel too bad about getting rid of them. Um, probably recycle them. But this is my way of recycling. So anyway, you would just go through each of the colors. Now you do want to let these, you know, I plop them up there, if you, especially with little kids or like I like to call them my little fuzzy kids over here that like to get into stuff. Um, it would definitely step through this with little paws. Stick them up in a high shelf. You can't even see my high shelf. So we'll get an example over there. Stick them up in my high shelf and you let them dry. Now you don't want to get like I said, fuzzy children, cat hair all in it. So you could definitely kind of prop that up there. My worry is that if they stayed wet and didn't um, dry, which they will eventually, um, that they might get kind of moldy from the moisture. That's just my paranoia. That may be totally uh, fictitious. But um, put the lid on there after you filled them all with colors. Now, if you want, are you someone that likes to, you know, mix colors? Well, what you could do is just take kind of the basics and fill them in there, and then you can mix some of maybe your custom colors. You could try a little, you know, a couple dots of each to see, you know, what portions you wanted. Because, you know, two drops of blue versus, and one drop of yellow will make a darker green than, say, two drops of yellow and one drop of blue, if you get my idea. Um, and those are primary colors. So if you want to do that and custom make them, that's totally on you. So this little thing is probably fitting here too. Um, that's a case that I have that's actually from a Betsy Johnson toiletry set. It came with a bunch of things. I usually just use the big one. They put everything in there. But it also has like this flat version. So if you just want to tuck that in there with your little brushes and a little bit of watercolor paper or whatever you want. Uh, you could do that. I also have this bag that my best friend made me and this bag that she bought for me that has a little dialic on there. 
So some sugar salts. And that would fit in there too. These are not as waterproof as say this would be. Um, you see it's shiny and um, made for toiletries. You could totally go to like the dollar store and grab a bag that is made for toiletries, like a little cheapy bag. Um, or you could get something not necessarily designer. This is probably from like TJ Maxx. So do not fret. I did not pay a lot for this. Um, but something you could wipe down if say you got paint on it or something that could hold moisture from your watercolors and wet brushes and stuff like that. So that is how I made my kit. Um, like I said, the second one is for my daughter, but you can make them as gifts. You know, how awesome would that be? You have, you know, your little custom set in a little bag and I have brushes in here, which you will see in the previous video uh, that I made that are little brushes. And that would be kind of like a sweet present, you know? So not expensive, this little, uh, ice tray at Bed Bath & Beyond was uh, two sets for four bucks. This uh, particular um, wood burner was from Walnut Hollow when I worked for them a couple of years ago. So this was part of that uh, relationship. However, I have my own one that I bought, gosh, it's got to be like 12 years ago <laughs> um, when my daughter was tiny. And these little hot blades come with it. This is the Creative Versa tool, uh, which you can definitely use for other projects. If you were really into cutting hot plastic though, it's an option. Obviously the silicone ones, you won't even need this thing at all. You can totally skip that. Uh, this set that I got from Walmart is only, I wanna say it's like 13 bucks, 12 and some change, plus like tax. Um, these come from the dollar store. So we're talking about like really cheap gift. Maybe, you know, you do not have to give them this whole set of paints, right? You could make multiple little kits with that. Um, so, you know, we're talking about maybe like five, between five and 10 bucks for your own little watercolor kit or kits to give as gifts. So if that's something you can think of, especially with things like Easter. Wouldn't that be cool to be in an Easter basket? You could even do like this watercolor, um, not watercolor, those coloring books. You know, they've got the super fancy ones now. If they had decent paper, you could do that. I use my little uh, sketchbook, which is cool. And it's just a real basic sketchbook to use for watercolor. This is one that I did on Sunday while we we're at the beach, which is what spawned me showing how to do travel watercolors in a sense of like traveling with watercolors, not how I did this, because I did this while my daughter and husband took a walk. They were a little bored. Um, I like to just chill at the beach, relax. So that is all for today. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, you can check out more things that I've made on my website, which is just craftyladyabby.com. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And that's just Crafty Lady Abby. I also have a Pinterest page, which you can check out for watercolor tutorials, or <laughs> there are like thousands of pens on there is, you know, there's a limit on how many pens, um, or how, wait, there is a limit on how many pens. I haven't got that. How many boards you could have, found that one out. Um, yeah, so that's all guys. Have a wonderful crafty day, bye.